In this video, we're going to discuss a recent video by Ryan Hall of the YouTube channel Ryan Hall Y'all, and we're going to look at some other reliable sources to see if his predictions are lining up with theirs. And then we're going to try to answer the question, what should we be doing with this information? Now, if you're not familiar with this channel, you should definitely go check it out. He's developed a trusted name in our community, the Prepper community, because of the accuracy of his seasonal forecast. What caught my and many of my subscribers' attention recently is his winter prediction video. He predicts that the upcoming winter season is expected to be very different, much more extreme than typical. Now, he states that this unprecedented El Nino's warmer waters will significantly influence weather patterns worldwide. Now, I'll link up to his recent video in the description and comment section below if you want to check that video out. He suggests that Western Canada and the central U.S. will be much warmer than usual. At the same time, the East Coast may experience colder temperatures and an increased likelihood of big snowstorms, which he calls Big Daddy Snowstorms. Now, he even makes the bold prediction that at least two areas of the Northeast have a 15 to 20 percent greater chance of experiencing one of these Big Daddy Snowstorms, the catastrophic kind that we've seen shut down Buffalo, and the accompanying type of cold that we've witnessed wipe out power to almost the entire state of Texas. He also forecasts exceptionally violent rainstorms and downpours in other areas that could jeopardize millions of people in agricultural operations. Now, could he be right with these predictions? He's been spot on in the past and he has a reputation for accuracy and not sugarcoating the truth. Significant events now suggest a higher probability of these two big daddy storms, as he calls them, plus even more extreme weather resulting in massive rainstorms and flooding this season for warmer, wetter, winter regions. Now, while I think he has a great channel, I think we should also look at other information and try to get an understanding of what we should expect this winter. More factors to consider. So let's start out by looking at some of the other current facts and data as it relates to weather. You could summarize this discussion we're about to have as anomalies. It's winter in South America at the moment, but they are experiencing an extraordinary heat wave with multiple spells of unusually hot weather affecting Chile, Argentina, and the surrounding areas. The latest heat wave has pushed temperatures above 100 degrees Fahrenheit, setting an August record for Chile. And these temperatures are 18 to 36 degrees above the average. The extreme conditions are attributed to a powerful zone of high pressure or a heat dome centered around Paraguay, dominating the weather in that region. Now, abnormally warm winter temperatures have also been observed in Australia, Africa, and some island regions with persistent high pressure zones occurring more frequently and lingering over the same areas for longer. The ongoing heat is expected to persist for days, with temperatures remaining well above the average in the Andes region. Now, this unseasonably warm weather extends out into the Pacific Ocean, which is why we have an El Nino cycle. The specific warming hasn't peaked yet, so we don't really know how intense this El Nino season is going to be, even though it currently exceeds most of the previous El Ninos. That has already contributed to more moisture in the air, resulting in larger than typical typhoons smashing into China. Now, previous typhoons have already contributed to mass crop failures and forced the evacuations of millions, and stronger and stronger storms continue hitting China. Record-breaking rains from Typhoon Doksuri hit northern China and completely flooded many agricultural areas. Now, some corn crops were deeply submerged and ruined, with only the tops of the plants showing above the water. A reservoir in Beijing Shengping District logged a precipitation reading of 29.3 inches over just five days. That's six inches more rain than the city has seen in such a short time in over 140 years. And also, we have an uncharacteristic warming of the North Atlantic. What it does mean, though, is more moisture in the air. And when combined with these warmer areas of ocean, when winter does come, it will have a lot more moisture to work with when it creates a storm. It also means that the areas between cold fronts and warm fronts, when that polar air does make the plunge northward, will be sharper and more extreme. Now, that spells larger than normal rainstorms for those with a milder winter in the southern and lower Midwest of the United States. So what do we do with all this information? What you should be doing. So what should you be preparing for? I think it's vital that the forecast inform our preparations. If you survived the Buffalo snowstorm or the Texas cold snap that brought the electrical grid down for several days and left most of the state's population shivering in the dark, you should see how important it is to prepare in advance for these extreme weather conditions. If you live in one of these predicted big daddy storm areas, you're gonna definitely wanna watch our video 
four critical rules to survive a winter power outage. But even if you don't live in one of these potential blizzard areas, you're still going to want to take a look at our video, 24 Affordable Winter Survival Items to Get Now. I'll drop a link to both of these videos in the comment section and description section below. Now, a 15 to 20 percent chance of a winter snowstorm so large that generations to come will refer to it should be motivation enough to prepare. However, even if you don't live directly in these predicted zones, you have to understand that these two potential mega winter storms are just punctuation marks in what may be extreme weather for a great many people. If your area has a history of torrential downpours, which in generations past have led to rivers overflowing their banks or flash floods, you have to ask yourself if you have hardened off your area and home to these disasters. Preparing for a brutal winter in a non-snow area requires proactive steps to ensure your safety and well-being. I would encourage you to stock up on essential supplies, including non-perishable food, water, medications, batteries, and winter or rain protection clothing. You have to ensure that you have an adequate supply of canned goods, dried fruits, nuts, and other non-perishable items that you can sustain yourself in case you get stuck in your home. If everyone in your community watched and implemented what we showed in our video, three months is all you need as a prepper, here's why. Most disasters would be inconveniences of life and confined to just the destruction that they bring. But when it comes to water, you also need both stored water and a means to treat and filter water. Flood waters, they can often overwhelm municipal systems, and boil orders are very common after excessive rain. I would encourage you to insulate your home to keep the cold and precipitation out and maintain your heating system in good condition. And as we show in these videos, you have to have an alternate means to keep warm in case your HVA system is inoperable. Clear branches and trees from your area around your house, especially any dead materials. You also want to secure any objects, even heavy objects, that may be picked up by the wind. Now, additionally, winterize your vehicle and equip it with an emergency kit. I would encourage you to stay informed about weather forecasts and emergency alerts as well. You should consider signing up for emergency alerts to receive important notifications regarding severe weather conditions. You should download and use a weather app or consult a national weather website to know the storm's potential, intensity, and trajectory. Don't just wait until the storm is already on the radar before downloading a good weather app to your phone or bookmarking some trusted weather resources. There's really no slant or bias in a Doppler weather map, so you can see what's coming your way and how strong it will be when it's on top of you. The thing is this, creating an emergency plan with your family or your roommates, including designating a meeting place and knowing local emergency resources is vital. You're gonna to wanna to purchase a snow shovel and de-icing supplies to manage snow and ice around your property if you live in an area that may be impacted. An emergency tarp can also be useful for temporarily and instantly fixing a leaking roof before the leak becomes more significant. When we talk about winter weather, it's easy to see how these mega snowstorms can grab all the headlines, but understand what a more intense winter will mean for you where you live. If your winter is drier than usual, will that mean more significant potential for wildfires or flooding and mudslides when the rain actually does come? If your winter will be wetter than usual, but mild temperature wise, are you prepared to handle the extra rain and high winds? And by taking the measures I outline in our videos, you will be well prepared for the most challenging winter you may have ever faced and better equipped to handle any adverse conditions that may arise. Sure, it would be nice if we could just hope that Ryan Hall and other experts, what they're predicting is off, but we shouldn't dismiss them because we don't like the potentials that are brought to our attention. If they are even partially correct, it's cause enough that you should consider preparing accordingly. And if we aren't in the specific impact zones they mentioned, we should still prepare for the extreme winter weather that we're gonna face in our particular area. If you have any thoughts or any feedback, feel free to post that below. And as always, stay safe out there.